I updated my iFlight F722 Twin G to 441, and now it's not being detected by any computer. Betaflight isn't seeing the quad, can't load it into DFU mode, nothing happens. Did I brick it? So, I just, Eddie. Just real, real quick, yeah. I took this out of the. Well, you're, I would love you to go over why, um, how to do this stuff. Just so you know, we went back and forth with a bunch in the Discord, so I took it out of the queue on purpose because uh, oh, we okay. could not figure out his issues with a bunch of back and forth. So I told him to email you because yeah. it was probably an email question. Yeah, because because this is this is a weird one. I want to cover it because it's a weird one, um, and it's a weird one because simply flashing a flight controller with Betaflight Configurator can't brick it. Like the 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 DFU mode that you use to flash the flight controller, it's in the processor, and by flashing the processor through Betaflight Configurator, it's not possible to disturb that dfu code it's it's somewhere separate safe and that's the whole point it a long time ago the code that you use to flash the processor not not a beta flight processor but in general a processor in general the code that you use to flash the processor was in the same sort of storage partition as the actual running code itself and so when you flashed the processor if the flash got interrupted, you might have overwritten the code that was used to perform the flash, and then you would truly be bricked and not be able to reflash the, the device. But the manufacturers got smart, and they took the bootloader code that is used to flash the processor, and they put it somewhere safe and in a box that cannot be sort of overwritten or erased or tampered with. And so anytime you're flashing beta flight and your flash goes wrong in some way, and now the flight controller, ah, it's bricked. DFU slash bootloader is still there inside the processor, and you should be able to get at it by holding the ultimate workaround is to hold down the bootloader button and plug in USB. And if that doesn't work, then there are a couple things that it could be. And I'm going to go through what they are. One thing that it could be is that the drivers or the USB cable on your computer is messed up. No one ever thinks this is the problem. They're always like, no, no, that's fine. But it, it is the case. Um, you can download the Impulse RC Driver Fixer app, Impulse RC Driver Fixer. You can Google it. And that will fix your driver if your driver has become messed up. Um, that doesn't work 100% of the time because sometimes your driver is really messed up, but that should work most of the time. Another thing that can cause DFU to stop working is literally if your bootloader button is broken, some flight, my, my JBF7 flight controller, you can't really see this. It has like one of the metal buttons. It's actually a physical button. Some of the flight controllers have like a little metal film button that can be damaged just by poking it or pressing it. It can tear off. And in that case, the button may not work and you, it'll be more difficult to put the flight controller into bootloader mode. A third thing that can happen is that these flight controllers, they can be put into bootloader mode through a UART. So normally when we go into bootloader or DFU mode, it's via the USB port. But the manufacturers of the processor know that not every device is gonna have USB. And so they have the ability to force the processor into bootloader mode by doing something to a UART. And sometimes if you put a receiver or a GPS unit on a particular UART on a flight controller, it will kick the flight controller into bootloader mode. But instead of going into bootloader on the USB port, it'll go into bootloader on that UART, which will then confuse the hell out of you because you're plugging in and you're on the USB and it looks like it's in bootloader mode, but it's not at beta flight isn't responding. The fix to that, ah, the fix to that <laughs> is to basically desolder your receiver, your GPS, unplug your video transmitter, just disconnect everything from the flight controller and then try and put it into bootloader mode and it may work. So this is sort of a general discussion about bootloader mode, right? Um, but the, the shorter answer is that flashing the flight controller in beta flight configurator cannot brick the flight controller. It cannot destroy bootloader mode, DFU mode. It just, it just really can't. 
So if you're unable to get your flight controller into bootloader mode, it's probably one of those things that I talked about. Or the fourth, the last thing is hardware damage. Now, obviously, flashing the flight controller isn't going to cause hardware damage. So, you know, this story doesn't sort of point that direction. But if you've got a flight controller that simply will not go into DFU mode, no matter what you do, you could just have a damaged flight controller and it may just be dead. So Eddie Nunez points out that he has crossfire on UART1. That's that's possible, Eddie. So, um, Eddie, uh, I think it's UART1 and UART4, but I'm not 100% sure I'm remembering that right. On the JBF7, we changed the manual. We used to recommend that you put Crossfire on UART1, but we people were unable to get into bootloader mode because the Crossfire receiver was kicking the flight controller into bootloader on UART1. And if you just move it to UART2, you'll be okay. All right. Hopefully that fixes it. Bloated Goat wants to know, can you break a flight controller by disabling USB in the ports tab? Uh, no. I mean, I know what you're getting at. So so let's show this real quick so people understand, you know, in case anybody's not clear. What he's asking about is if you go here. Ah, oh, Betaflight devs have gotten smart. It used to be huh, that you could disable this MSP connection on the USB port. The Betaflight devs won't let you do it anymore. Good. That's great. Actually, I'm not sure I noticed that, or if I did notice it, I forgot it. If you are on an older version of Betaflight and you disable this and save, then you will not be able to get back into the flight controller to configure it, but you could just put it in DFU mode and reflash it, and it's not bricked. 